Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video I am once again taking a look at one of your designs that you have linked me in the comments section of one of my videos. And if you wish to see something of yours shown on this channel, just drop me the link somewhere and I'll eventually get round to it. So for today we're looking at another cargo ship. And this one is called the Dust Class Cargo Ship which is this lovely thing right here. A nice small ship, nothing too overkill about it. It does use a few mods and it does have a few rather unique aspects to it that haven't been seen on other ships on this channel. So pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, there it is. The Dust Class Cargo Ship is 2,594 large blocks. It uses the decorative block number one and number two DLC packs. It uses mods for the landing gear and for food generation, but you can ultimately miss out the food generation if you're not interested in that type of survival. So we're going to start by taking a look around the outside and then we're going to go for a tour of the interior and fly it around. Now I will just mention that this is in survival mode so I have filled up absolutely every cargo container possible with ice because it is a hydrogen primary ship. It does have a few atmospheric thrusters but they are not going to help you for the most part. So starting at the very front, we've got this lovely glass bridge where we can view inside and we have a fantastic view out of it. We have our control seat right here. This threw me off guard. I thought this was a modded block and I just couldn't figure out which mod pack it came from, but they must have added that with the small block windows or some time before that. I've just never seen it before. Anyway, it's a fancy seat that sits at the very front that allows you to control the ship and view outside this window. As we come around the side, we see we've got some Gatling turrets on the top and around here we've got some lovely block work in orange and the default grey. Moving around to the side, we've got our first access door to get in and out. Now there are three ways to get in. This door, the one on the opposite side and through our cargo ramp. As we move further around the side here, we've got some atmospheric thrusters and some hydrogen thrusters. And around here, we've got a small hydrogen and atmospheric pod. As we continue along the side, we've got some more hydrogen thrusters and a large atmospheric thruster to aid you with landing on planets. And as for that, we just got some more lovely block work. Moving around to the back of the ship, we've got two large atmospheric thrusters and some hydrogen thrusters, which have been put onto a rotor, where if you press a certain block on your cockpit, these will bend around to a straight position and then switch off. While doing that, it will also deploy the modded landing gear and you'll be ready to land on a planet. And then when you're ready to take off, you can press it again. The landing gears will get retracted and the thrusters will go into this position right here. It's a novel thing, but does require the script that allows thrusters to function on a subgrid. Coming up and above, above our thrusters, we've got some more orange on grey. We've got some more Gatling turrets. We've got a connector there for you to connect up to another ship or a base to restock this thing. We've got plenty of window blocks and stairs to get around at the top here in case you need to do some maintenance work. We've got an antenna that sits nicely in this little hole right here. And then as we move towards the front, we see those two Gatling guns from before. Dropping down and coming underneath, We've got some surprising stuff. Yes, so these little things right here are our modded retractable landing gear, which will just fold out a great distance away and allow you to clamp onto the ground without having used the ugly vanilla landing gears on pistons. Moving towards the center, we've got this lovely small block grid right here, which is our cargo bay, which we can deploy all the way down and get stuff in and out. We also have some connectors there that can be deployed forwards in case you need to snap it onto a small ship or vehicle but more on that a bit later. We've got hydrogen thrusters that surround that, and then moving towards the back of the ship, there are the bottoms of the atmospheric thrusters. There are some more deployable landing gear, even more over there, and that's the back of the ship. It's very light on the detail, but it does look fantastic with the blocks it's using. I am quite fond of this design. It's really nice, especially how the thrusters at the back have been housed. I think it's more the orange that is standing out a lot against the grey, but now it's time for me to get into my character and take you inside. So around here, we need to come into our doorway, which sits right there. So opening that up and coming in, we don't have any scripts or timer blocks on the door, or at least I haven't seen any of these doors automatically close behind me, so you will have to manually do it. You could always just set up a timer block situation if you wanted to do that, 
or just slap another programmable block somewhere and put the auto door and airlock script in. But this is our main room, our main living quarters that will take us to everywhere on the ship. So around here we've got some button panels which do the exact same thing on both sides. That's to control the lights all the way around the ship. We've got some beds right there for a quick little snooze. We've got some corner chairs and some planters to make this more homey. We've got the jukebox there and an LCD screen with a lovely logo on there. And the logo is saying that you're a transport ship. It kind of reminds me of the Planet Express logo. I don't know why. Around to here, we then got our kitchen bay. We've got our locker, our kitchen DLC block, and our modded food creating block, where we can put certain resources in and it will produce food for us to eat. Now, if I put my HUD on, you'll be able to see on the top left hand corner, I've got a food bar, I've got a water bar, and what I believe a sanity bar. Yes. Me and my friends don't quite know what that bottom bar is. We usually call it the religious bar that goes down if you're not religious enough. But we are just messing around. It's pretty sure it's a sanity bar which goes down if there are enemies nearby or if you sprint too much. Yes, we've got a table here for you to sit on and eat your food. And around this corner right here, we then got a survival kit to respawn on and to recharge on. Through this doorway, we then got our shower block and our toilet. And I do love it when people set stuff up like this. I don't know why it's so ridiculously simple but just to walk in here have a shower block have a toilet block it's just great anyway coming back through here we can then go to different areas these two doors on the left and the right will take us to our bridge and then we can go down here we should go to the heart of the ship where our cargo bay is and our little deployable elevator thing right there Good use of the DLC rails, they are a fantastic addition to the game, as well as the catwalks that go all the way along. But yes, in here, we don't have too much to talk about. This is where all our cargo containers are being stored, and like I said, I filled basically all these up with some ice, because it is a hydrogen-powered ship. Yes, coming around to here, because I don't need to go through the cargo containers, because they're all full of ice, we then have some button panels up here where we will need to use our jetpack. We can press number one, to deploy the ramp all the way down. Don't know why I keep calling a ramp is an elevator cargo thingy with Bob. Yes, it comes all the way down a good distance. A small ship or a small land vehicle can come in and out. And we can get stuff in all nicely. If we wanted to attach a vehicle, we do have these two buttons there, which can deploy these right here. So if you're having trouble connecting them up, they can just be extended out a little bit and snap yourself onto it. Let's just undo that and come all the way back around to here. So walking around past all these cargo containers and past these lovely catwalk blocks, we can come through this doorway right here. So in here is basically the brains of the ship where all the tunnel blocks are, all our programmable blocks and all our very important items. So in here we've got some programmable blocks, which is the power graphs. Over here we then have our subgrip thruster master, which is how those thrusters are functioning on the rotor. Up there we don't have much, and on there, once again, we don't have much, but they are there if you needed to set stuff up, such as the auto door and airlock or the automatically closing door script. Coming all the way over here will be a door that takes us back to where we just were. And coming up to here, we didn't have our hydrogen engine, which we can flip on if we need that power. And back here, we've then got our O2H2 generator, our large hydrogen tanks, which sit very well. Over here, so we've got some nice access. Up here is our gyroscopes. We've got some batteries down here for emergency power. And yes, down here is some more gyroscopes and this gravity generator I put in myself because it's always useful to have one on here and makes it much more smoother to walk up the stairs and all that. Yes, this is our lovely little brains of the ship. And then we come back to the bridge. It's a very nice, very simplistic setup that works very well if you are going to use this in survival mode. It makes things a hell of a lot easier to get around and know where stuff is. Behind us are some transparent LCD screens that I did miss because they're transparent and there is the script telling us our power. So there's our power usage like that and yeah, it's just going to keep updating and showing that on that little screen. Coming back through here and towards the bridge all the way around. Very good use of the DLC packs on this ship. They are a great addition to this game. Yes, through this door, this is our lovely bridge and what a view we get outside here. If you want to know what skybox I'm using, I don't currently know, but it will be in the description below if you wish to download it. But anyway, we don't have too much to talk about in here. We've got some control seats with nothing on them, but if you wanted to, you could set them up for some turret controls and other stuff like that. 
If we come into our main seat, which I still swear is a modded block, but apparently it's not, we got some lovely stuff. Look at this stuff. It's got screens everywhere. We then got our gravity. We then got a main screen. They got a speed. Look at this thing. It's amazing. But yes, we got a few options on our hotbar. Number one is for our atmospheric thrusters on and off. So if you don't need them, you can flip them on, but it will turn off the hydrogen thrusters on the side there. Number two is to lock or unlock our landing gear, because if we have a ship inside our hangar, we do not want to press P, because that will unlock the landing gear and unlock all ships connected to a connector. Number five is to trigger our cargo bay like that, so we don't have to go all the way down, we can do it from the cockpit, and then lift it all the way back up. Number eight is our landing mode, so pressing that will turn off our hydrogen thrusters at the back and flip them around to a vertical position. Our retractable landing gear will shoot out and be ready to clip to the ground. And then we can press number five and drop it all the way down and easily get stuff in and out of this ship. But if we're ready to take off, we can press number nine and that will retract everything back, flip our hydrogen thrusters back to their weird diagonal position and away we can go. On tab number two, we then got manual controls over our hydrogen thrusters if we wanted to turn them on and off. Number two for our turrets, number three for our O2 H2 generators, number six is for our atmospheric thrusters, number eight is for our hydrogen engine on and off, and number nine is to put our batteries into recharge or auto. And that just about covers the dust class cargo ship. It's a very nice little ship and it's time to do a quick little thruster test. So going forwards, we are quite slow, but do bear in mind I have filled all the cargo containers to the brim with ice. We do get some reasonable speed out of this in a fair amount of time. Stopping on the other hand, we are quite slow, so we do have to make sure there's plenty of room between us and our destination to make sure we don't come slamming into it. Going left and going right, we are quite fast actually. Then going down, going down? It turns out there's no hydrogen thrusters pointing up. So that means we cannot go down. So if we were to hit space, we will forever go up until we do a 180 flip and stop ourselves. That's quite a odd thing on the ship. Yes, as for the actual mouse control, there is a hell of a lot of weight onto this. Not too much that is overbearing, but there's enough there to have some kind of control over it when you are moving around. But as for that, that is it for the Dust Class Cargo Ship. It's a lovely ship with some great designs and a great interior and some novel things such as the rotating thrusters at the back there. So it'll be in the description below if you wish to download and play around with it yourself. I highly recommend you do because it is a nice ship to play with. And I'll be back with another Space Engineers video some point soon. Bye bye.